the Chiefs really being the villains, getting booed like that. I love to see that because, you know, that's only going to bring out the best in the guys like Mahomes, Hell Andy yeah. Reid. Um, obviously, some of the things uh, Goodell was talking about, kind of talking about getting um, – you know, getting Taylor into it, the script, all those different things. So it was some interesting things from opening night. Okay, so let's start with what you were talking about, the boys being the villains. And obviously, Travis Kelsey is a very beloved character before this particular season. Mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes, very beloved human being before seemingly all the success came down his you know, came down his 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 chimney, seemingly, yeah, yeah. dropped out of nowhere. Here's Travis Kelsey talking to the crowd, the 49ers fans, and how much he's embracing being the bad guy. And uh, it's, it's been asshole. <laughs> Y'all are firing me up. It make me want to play right now, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I love the booze more than I love the cheers, baby. Keep them coming, Niners gang. Keep them coming. Okay, so he said, I love the booze more than I love the cheers. That's kind of happened this year with Travis Kelsey. Yeah. He's on every single commercial. Yep. He's dating Taylor Swift. Yep. Right. They're in the middle of a dynastic run. His podcast is the biggest mm. on earth. I hate this guy is the natural reaction. I assume a guy who considers himself a fountain and an energy giver didn't love that he became the bad guy. But now, classic mm. Ohio dude out of Cleveland embracing the world, hating him. We might see the greatest Travis Kelsey for the next 10 years, Ty. Yeah, I mean, you know, at a certain point, I'm sure if you're a competitor like these guys are like at, you know you get all this stuff and especially this year for him like he, you he can't escape his him, his own image you know it's like everywhere he goes he's probably seeing like you always talk about like hey I'm in certain places like I'm seeing way too much of myself right now like I you know you kind of just want to get away like he can't do that he has the biggest podcast in the world he's literally the it couple like world renowned celebrity couple which I don't know there's a handful of people in the world who actually know what that experience is like. And then on top of it, you're in the middle of this dynasty. Like it's probably nice. Like, okay. Yeah. The being like, you know, getting all this praise and adulation all the time is nice. But when people at the end of the day, people are booing you and you go into other people's house and you get to like kind of just rip their throats out. You're a competitor. You're a football player. Like he, all these guys deep down, whether they say it or not, and now they're kind of starting to to show that they do. Like, they love it. You have to love Stone it. Stone Cold Killers on that Chiefs team. Absolutely. You know, Chris Jones, Patrick Mahomes had the same exact thought. But let's not get it twisted. San Francisco 49ers filled with very similar humans. Brock Purdy was asked about, you know, breaking the heart of Taylor oh, Swift. Whoa, oh, no. whoa. You, if it comes down to it, Brock, and it's late in the fourth quarter, are you prepared to disappoint Taylor Swift? Yes. <laughs> it Say it again? Yes, I'll leave it at okay. that. Okay, well, you write a song about it. You know? Oh, Squad <laughs> Hanson, obviously oh. host of Red Zone. He's hitting all the hot yeah. topics. What we all noticed is obviously that Brock Purdy seems to be very comfortable in every moment. But what you just realized, too, mm -hmm. thought there would be a... Uh, a little more, bit more of a size difference yeah. between Brock and Pat. Thought it would be a little more Drake May, Sam Howard. No, kind of, no. Kind of right mm -hmm. there. Just same hand that. size. Hey, Brock. Brock Party, same hand size as Patrick Mahomes. On the same stage as Patrick Mahomes. Wild. Handling questions about Taylor Swift. He has to think to himself, just two years ago, I was at Iowa State. Yeah. Nobody thought I was going to do anything. I was maybe going to have to go back to school, get my degree, <laughs> figure out what the hell I would be doing if I wasn't a professional football player. Maybe the XFL, maybe the USFL. And now he's answering questions about breaking Taylor Swift's heart and maybe being a part of the uh, Tortured Poets uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, album, yeah. album yeah. coming up here in uh, April 19th. Yeah, that's Come right. On, Not to mention, I mean, I know we had a conversation about this, but there's been a little bit conspiracy theory around, you know, the number 13 and Brock Purdy with Taylor Swift because, you know, February 7th. Second on the eleventh, you had those together. What is that? Thirteen. <laughs> Taylor Swift's favorite number. Brock Purdy, quarterback right, for the well, Niners. February second on the eleventh. Well, two is February. Two is February. February. Oh, February is oh, two, 11. Two, okay. 11. two plus okay. eleven. Two eleven. Now Thirteen. Thirteen. Brock and, Purdy. And number. That's the year twenty twenty four. You just don't even. Nope. That's not even part of. No, no. no the question ends matter. right here. Right. Month and day. Yeah. Always. But if you, okay. but if you do twenty minus. Four sixteen. You remember that game twenty four back in the yeah, day? Dominated. We I were, was very good at that we game as well. We were both in gifted and talented education. Um, Bingo. Because we could only for that game. Yeah, yeah, they said, "Hey, you, you guys are too smart to be with the regular kids. You guys need to go learn math and play twenty four all day long." It was sweet. Yeah, which we did. Yeah, it was, it actually, we're just competitive, and you're putting numbers in front of our face. Seems like we just ate the nerds alive. I've never been considered smart in school except for when they put that twenty four game. <laughs> Great game. Well, this guy might be a genius. Nope, just want to beat the nerds here. <laughs> this is pretty simple in there. But what is the conspiracy theory? 
that so we're hearing about? Essentially, conspiracy theories on both sides. It's like, okay, hey, because Brock Purdy is number 13, Taylor Swift's favorite number, he is going to be the one to take down Mahomes and the Chiefs, which everybody wants that to happen. But the other side of it is because Brock Purdy is the number 13 in the day and the month. There are so many people mad right now listening to this bullshit. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. This, this is a conversation on the internet, people. This is not doing uh, – by the way, I mean, there was a video and Travis Kelsey was asked about his fade in the article where Travis Kelsey is like, them putting that out on February 1st is just throwing me to the wolves. Yeah. Us talking about Taylor Swift in the 13 yeah. and Travis Kelsey them relating is just building up how much everybody hates him. But that's life at the top. This is the Super Bowl. Yeah. Everybody's going to be talking about everything that takes place there. Roger Goodell's press conference is something that normally draws conversation for months and months after the Super Bowl because he normally alludes to mm -hmm. a lot of things. The big thing we learned last night is oh, numerous, but Philadelphia Eagles Dallas Cowboys, Friday night of opening week. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yeah. Wow. The Philadelphia Eagles lose a home game to Brazil, and it's the opening weekend mm -hmm. or whatever. And we had learned about Brazil's fan base through whenever we were working alongside DAZN. DAZN has the international NFL mm -hmm. rights. And there were some countries that were very large into the NFL. Germany was one of them, mm -hmm. obviously. I think Italy was another one. Spain, Spain, Canada, obviously. Mexico, huge. Brazil seemingly had a fan base for the NFL that was much larger than many of the other countries. So now they're taking a game there. How you doing? The NFL continuing to expand and evolve, con man. That was the biggest piece of information. Me and Michael Cole, before the show goes, last time Monday Night Raw, me and Cole just talking. Mm -hmm. Kind of going through some stuff. Hey, this is who this person is. This is who this person is. This stuff happened. I'm like, thank you, Cole. Can't wait to get out there. Con man, just like last week, whenever he heard the I love yous from Travis to Taylor, Killers. he goes, yes, we got it. And I'm like, what? He goes, Roger Goodell just took a home game away from the Philadelphia Eagles and sent it to Brazil. And it's happening Friday night opening week. Yeah. It is big news, though, because as they continue to expand and grow into these like international games, more home games are going to get plucked from some mm -hmm. of these cities. People are going to get pissed whenever they start losing money in games, especially when they're paying for season tickets over generational stuff like Philadelphia fans have for a long time. Brazil is going to be such a great venue. Like seeing It's going to be a ridiculous. It's going to be nuts. All those people in Sao Paulo, it's going to be incredible. Uh, I, <laughs> Sao for Paulo one, in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. I, I for one, uh, am excited because it's a Friday night game. Like we've always talked about, hey, the NFL stays away from Friday night because Friday night lights in high school football. And obviously that is a real thing. But if we can see what the numbers would be on a Friday night NFL game abroad, and it's Philly, I do worry about Philadelphians in Brazil. I'm just going to put that out there now. I think they need to be on their P's and Q's. I think they need to be very, very careful, and they shouldn't be running their mouths. Cause I, I, I really, that, what happened with that swimmer? Didn't he just make something up? Uh, Ryan Lochte. Oh, Lochte, yeah. He, he, the uh, fake uh, Robert. You remember that? Oh, he got all yeah. boozed up and destroyed a gas station yeah. and then said, <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. This guy tried to kill me. Yeah. John, I was attacked, dude. <laughs> John, bro. Yeah. But the Brazilian fans, I think, will show up. Absolutely. And as these continue to grow, like what Germany did last year, mm -hmm. and obviously London has done over the years, what Mexico has shown awesome. to do, Canada, same exact thing. It's like only going to continue to grow. It's good for the business. And you talk about numbers and everything like that. Roger Goodell talked a lot yesterday about numbers. Mm -hmm. The amount of people that watched that only available on Peacock thing he addressed, the number of people he's expecting to watch the Super Bowl, he's saying 200 million. Yeah. Mm. He said 200 million people in America are going to watch this game. Damn. Last year was like 120 or 114 or something yeah. like mm -hmm. that. He's thinking 200 million people are going to watch the Super Bowl. That's absurd. Everything is up and to the right for the NFL, but from what Roger Goodell's being told by people I assume that are in the know, it's only growing exponentially. Going to Brazil, they take a game to Australia, mm -hmm. take a game into Africa, wow. continue to grow into mm -hmm. Europe. It's like global expansion is happening right in front of our eyes with Roger Goodell, D-Bud. That's what they want. I think ultimately it's going to be better for the game, too. The more you see it happening in the NBA, the more the game has got globalized, the more superstars come from these mm -hmm. different countries, different places. You start to have different clinics or camps or school where you can cultivate different talent in different places. And I'm sure it's, it's a dream right now for Goodell. It's good. It's good to be obviously attached to the NFL, but in the position that he's in, and you were talking about it early before we went on air. You know, some people feel like he's the smartest man in the world. He's, you know, manipulating all these things. You know, it's scripted. It's this, that, and the third. And then he's just growing it. The owners, I'm sure, are happy. He's happy. So it, it, it's dope. And 200 million people, though. What is it? 350 million in, in America? Yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. You can see it. And just to say that number, 
You know, because if it's under, now Roger Goodell's going to have to answer about why yeah. he overprojected yeah. the amount of people. And Roger never does. Roger's always, shh, shh, shh. Mm -hmm. and I know he's a genius businessman. He's proven that through time and time again. Just look where the NFL is. And now the great sport of football helps. Football is a fantastic sport. It's obviously easy to sell to a lot of people. But the amount of credit that people give Roger Goodell to script every single season and to make sure everybody keeps a secret. I assume at night when he's laying down with his wife eating his peanut M&Ms right. on that leather chair or whatever the case yep, is, sure. he's like, these people think I'm a super genius. But I assume he's also like, how do these people think I'm able to do all these things?